like I said, it's a real pleasure for me to be here and to rub minds because in democracy, we must always talk. In democracy, we must exchange ideas. We must um, discuss, agree and disagree on issues without being absolutely disagreeable. There's no point in doing that. Now, I have, since our convention, I've been away and uh, been watching. Now, the state, naturally, any organization, no matter the organization, once it's made up of human beings, you will have infractions, you will have disagreements, you will have all kinds of uh, uh, positive issues, negative issues, but the ability to be able to manage those crises for you to arrive at a positive destination will be a measure of your capacity. Now we are going into election year. Yes, we have some problems in our party, but that they are not unsurmountable. First, I want to appeal to all shades, all sides, to sheet their swords. We are in the throes of political uh, journey. National elections. We must convince the public that we have the capacity and the ability to manage the resources of this country for the benefit of our country. All cacophony is coming from all corners. I want to plead with our people to sheet their sword. Uh, we, can, uh, we can achieve more by talking, and no matter how heated the discussions will be, exercise your minds, but not people who are throwing tantrums, people who are throwing uh, bombs and uh, statements that are absolutely unnecessary. Statements that can totally destroy this party. Statements of arrogance, statements of uh, innuendos and name callings. I want to plead. As an elder, I remember in 1998 when this party was established. What the founding fathers said to all of us and how they came up with this concept of the PDP where they sat together, people who could never before sit in a room to discuss politics. Can you imagine Jim Obodo with uh, Alex Ekweme, with Bolaige, with uh, Baba Solomon La, with uh, Alaji Rimi, with Bamanga Tuko, and all, all such characters, all those people. They came together for the interest of this country and divided Nigeria into six geopolitical zones. Because the experiences in the First Republic and the Second Republic were this friction. The majority in the northern part had their way and their say. Minorities were perpetual onlookers. Same in the south. Majority had their way and their say. The minorities were onlookers. It created a lot of friction. And that friction created came to a point where it led to the military. I mean, you need to need to read the history of this country. That friction, that, now you alone did, and the local balance. Why should we just be onlookers? Why are we not, as God created some brilliant people in the majority, so also there are brilliant people in the minority. How do we resolve this crisis? to have this inclusivity and bring Nigerians to the table where everybody will go home with one asset or the other. That was how this party was established. Uh, people gave, gave the uh, concept all kinds of names, oh, zoning, uh, rotation, and whatever. But it sustained democracy for this long. Now, um, I, I have seen 
the, the disagreements, the anger on all sheets. But I want to plead, like I said, as an elder, we can get into the inner closet and the upper chamber of our party, the board of trustees, the elders must now rise to the occasion where they must tell everybody to cool down. Uh, you know, even an Iroko tree changes its leaves. But uh, no tree that has leaves changes its roots. The concept that established the party is very difficult to change it. Otherwise, we are looking for trouble. But let us learn from the mistakes. Because there have been mistakes. I also suffered from the same mistakes. You remember we had the national chairmanship issue that it was supposed to be southwest. Some people maneuvered themselves. They thought they had the powers. Look at where we are today now in the party. But I have not left the party because as a Christian, as a strong believer in my faith, that everything works in the interest of the Almighty. A delay is not a denial. I am still here today. I didn't become national chairman and I've not faded away. So if you lose on one side, you don't need to bring the roof down. On all sides. And those who won must be gracious even in victory. When I listen to some of our colleagues, the kind of comments that are coming, I feel really very angry. It's unnecessary. If we do not learn from the, uh, the, the uh, activities of the past, how can we progress? So my plea is all sides, like the labor people will say, kuli, 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 kuli temper. Now, um, yeah, some people are even saying, oh, Atiku has no right to be talking to people. Who is the candidate? Who is saying he wants to wear the big crown? Why would he not talk to people? Because I had some of our senior colleagues say, he doesn't need to, it's the party. It is the congregation, the addition of every individual multiplier that makes the party. So if he starts the networking, what is wrong in doing that? That makes a lot of sense. I'm not saying A is right or B is right. I want to say everybody is right. But in the meantime, bring this issue within the party. Because Nigerians are waiting for our party. They are fed up with the APC. That is a contraption. A congregation of you know, strange bedfellows. That's not a political party. So, uh, battles... If you decide to start throwing stones at every dog that barks at you, <laughs> you will never get to your destination. Sometimes you look at such battles, you just move, move on. Hmm? Like I said, delay is not denial. Whatever God has destined for you in life, you will get there. So... I, that's my plea to our people. If we don't get it right, this nation will never forgive us. Because every day you wake up, you look at uh, Nigeria. Where are we? Armageddon is hovering over the corners of this country, ready to descend on our nation. Whether you are rich or you are poor, we not be we be immaterial. We got to be careful. Let us lead by that example. Because in our party, we have people with experience. We have people with uh, who are knowledgeable. We have people who have the the guts, the the nerves, the humaneness in human body. Because. I see our party as a human body. Is there any part of this human body that you can discard? Even the anus, the dirtiest part. Is there anyone? Every part is important. And that is the essence by which we must work to achieve 
our goals. To release her, she was like a skeleton. A full-bodied woman. She, in fact, when they had the prayers for her and all that, she just did it. She, she said she doesn't want to talk about these things. Because to remind it, she will just die. And they, they are still there. Satellites. Nigeria is not in under hole. Up till now. Our federal government has not done anything about the release of those characters, of those people. Why? When you look at it, so Nigerians, people are talking, oh, we want to go and impeach uh, Buhari. Ah. I said at this stage, <laughs> I don't think this is what is necessary. Bring all the issues against him. Let's go to the campaign. And, and, and educate Nigerians and prepare the minds of Nigerians. That's the power that we, our people have. The voice of the people. Voice populi, voice the A. Let the will of the people be respected. Uh, some came, oh, inter, in, uh, what is it? interim national government. I <laughs> said interim national government. It's not in our constitution. This is not a military government. Anything you can garner and let's work together to make sure that this so-called political party, which is a contraption, never revisits itself. So, uh, for our party, I believe we should get ourselves, stop all these fireworks, because it's not helping Nigeria. The interest of Nigeria is more bigger than any individual interest. And the party's interest is not is much bigger than the, inter, the the personal interest of any individual. If we love this party, we should shut up, go back, go inside, lock the room, and like we used to do it, come up with a suggested solution that will be acceptable to the minds and hearts of Nigerians. To put a smile once again on the faces of our brethren. Uh, enough of deceit, enough for fighting. And of course, if you look at the basis, how this came about, it's not far-fetched. The founding fathers decided that once the presidency comes from the northern zone, chairman of the party must come from the southern zone, and, revise, and vice versa. If the chairmanship comes from the northern zone, presidency must come from the southern zone. And it's so simply done. I told you that they created six geopolitical zones to make sure that every, whether minority or majority, you have a sense of belonging. That inclusivity is guaranteed. Because you have the president, the vice president, the senate president, the speaker, the secretary to government, and national chairman of the party. And so if the president comes from the north, vice president from the south, senate president from the north, speaker from the south, secretary to, gen secretary, gen secretary to the government from the, south, from the north, national chairman from the south. So every zone will go home feeling satisfied. There was some kind of uh, a woolly thing that happened. If you remember, we, we had a meeting in the party, and the party said, oh, uh, they had zone." Uh, only party positions. Where is the presidential position to be zoned? He created so much mayhem. That was how Secundus was removed, and then how you became, they had zoned the positions to the north. It was at that time they should have pronounced that the presidential candidate must also be zoned to the south. They refused. And when we argued at the next meeting, we now came out and said, look, there is need to revisit the report of that zoning. That was why a zoning committee to revisit it. And I was a member. So they brought about those of us who had been in the party from the beginning, 
who knew how those babas put these ideas together. When we played it, because the first meeting, oh, there was so much arrogance. Yes, we don't need zoning anymore. It has, we have passed the zoning. We, I said, what are you talking about? With what APC government has done to Nigeria, the zoning is more important now than even in 1999. And they cooled off. The high saluting speeches of, uh, we have there, you know, this arrogance diminished. And then they now came up and said, okay, if that is the case, uh, but what do you do? If you had announced this six months ago, people would have been conscious. Rather than spending money unnecessarily, they wouldn't have been, you know, he knew. Because it would have been your personal risk. Because the party position was clear. And the party is always right. It was a a a a a, a a compromise that, look, you, you know, we are more members of the same family. How can you rob Peter to pay Paul? If somebody has been wasting and spending his time trying to, and you didn't correct him at that time, you do it now six months after. What about all the money he has spent? The other members were reasonable. That is the capacity and the ability of this party. We accepted it. That, okay, you made a point. For now, let everybody in every zone come out to compete. But from now on, six months before the commencement of sale of forms in the future, you must announce the zoning. Now, if we were able to resolve that crisis and we went to the convention, I remember what you said. And I want to take him on his words because, you know, honorable men, your words must be your bond. He said, once a presidential candidate emerges from the north, I will resign. And I want to take him on that because I know him to be a respectable and responsible uh, human being, you know. So for me, uh, it is sacrosanct. All these brick bats, okay, by the uh, electoral law and all that, Atiku has a way, you know, the right to choose whoever is going to be his running mate. And that's not the end of life. I know so many things that went on. And the knowledge, the growth, the development of every human being must be based on the lessons you learn as you go along in your uh, life. God didn't say it will be a, a highway all the way. There are bumps. There will be roundabouts that will slow you down. There are even things you don't see that can bump into the road and disturb your, your speed. So take a lesson from that and let's roll on. You know, I, I, that was, it was in the interest of the party that I, I would have gone to the convention the last time, as national chairman, because he was supposed to be Southwest. Maybe at that time we would have scattered the party. But in the interest of the party, I said, no, I will not compete. Let it go. See where we are today. So let's use that as an example and rise above this uh, personal ambition, personal interest, and all these hula Nigerians are angry. We cannot, that, that's not what they want to hear. They want to know how you are going to solve the economic problems of this country. How you are going to bring SMILE back to them. How you are going to guarantee uh, uh, this entity called Nigeria in the international uh, 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 forum. Go outside and see brain drain. Doctors being taken out of Nigeria, you know, professionals. All these are young boys with IT knowledge. They are all running Canada and all that. But there will be a day that they will get to a ceiling that they cannot pass through a certain level. Frustration will set in. But that they are guaranteed good life, they will get salary, they will get job, they can train their children. And why can't we do that? I, I was born here, I went to school here. I went to St. Thomas, I lawyer in Lagos here. I went to Jebode Grammar School, went to University of Lagos. 
we were so proud and, and so before I wrote my exam, my final graduation exam, we had a job. We were eight in my graduating class, 53 years ago. But look at the state of the nation now. You see the young men, graduates, doing nothing. What do you think is going out in the north? It's the same revolution. Because you think it's only people who adapt, who will go and blow a train, if you are not educated. There are challenges. They are asking that they are tired, they are angry. The Talakawa's children are now graduates. They went back home, they are still staying in the huts of their father. And they are looking around, seeing all the rich men and say, hey, uh, what do I do? And we have a right, they have a right to challenge. But the way they are turning it is what I disagree with. Revolution can come in any form. Don't take the lives that God created. It's a sin. It's absolutely sacrilegious. They can make it. Elections are here now. Let us make sure. And I'm happy for one thing. You know, when God works, he works in his own mysterious ways. Why now that the electoral process had now been digitalized, modernized from the charade that people were using, the likes of body loan, that's what they want. You know, having stolen so much money from the coffers, they are ready to pay any amount of money to manipulate the results. And what do you have? Those who you elect have no link to the people. Whether they, your, your resources are there or not, they, they accrue the resources for their personal self and their family. That is not democracy. That is not governance. So, I, 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 I think... The question of this PDP thing, we have the people, experienced people, knowledgeable people, respectable people, responsible people who have been tried, who had been tested, who can rise above this pettiness and lead. You know, when, when they, I, I, I use the word we should Coolie, 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 coolie temper. Hmm? Look, I spent a lot of money. I prepared my campaign for national chairman like it was a presidential campaign. There was no village that I didn't go through. Or I snaked through this country trying to converse for votes. I didn't get it. There was so much manipulation. There was so much manipulation. And, uh, but I saw through them. As a general, you know, sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. Uh, I don't believe that Wiki will jump ship. Because if you remember some of the comments he had made against that party, PDP is still the best party, the most national in its outlook and in its format and in its behavior. The PDP has more uh, successes in putting smiles on the face of the people. We still have the human face in our party. Yes, we can disagree. Yes, you have lost some. It's not the end. You forgot my own experience. Pram, I became vice pres vice chairman Southwest. I became deputy national chairman South. I became deputy national chairman overall. And I spent 10 years at the National Secretariat, and I also became the Director General of the Presidential Campaign. You know, after all that work, what was my own uh, gain? 
convoluted conspiracy. They sent me to Kirikri. <laughs> that, that was what they, that was what they gave me as and as my own due. I didn't collapse. As a as a believer, I said, look. Of course, the first seven days it was the military in me that was working. And if I was able to get hold of the AK-47, I probably would have committed more murder than the total Second World War. But my wife brought my devotional books. It was the spiritual desert. That was what I regarded it. And I went into full spiritual enhancement. And at the end of it, because I didn't commit any offense. We just let the president uh, to be elected on our party, and I managed the whole, both the finances and the uh, campaign and everything with our colleagues. You would have thought the next thing would be the next man behind the president as the director general of the campaign. I was cooling off in the cooler in Kirikiri. I didn't, I didn't give up. I left. I still remain in this party. And all the experiences have garnered. Because when the Almighty wants to use you, He will take you out into His own spiritual desert. He will teach you things that you will never. I have slept in the room of Baba as the president. That means. I have stayed in the bedroom of the presidential man of Nigeria. And I have also been to the worst valley to have slept in the cell in Kirikiri prison. For doing what? Convoluted conspiracy. That they must punish this body judge. But, so, if I had gone in through that, I would never be standing before you today and be talking. It was an experience. And he, I got some, one friend of mine brought the last book by um, Nelson Mandela. And that book, the last book, one chapter there, spoke about the political prison. That there you learn about yourselves. You will learn about what you had done from the day you were born all through your life, and you see it like as if you are watching a movie. The good things you had done, the bad things you had done, and all that. And that the overall effect of it is that you will learn a lesson which will assist you in your future endeavor. That was my conclusion. And I've not regretted it. So, so in I this life, you make some. In this life, you lose some. But it is not once you lose that the whole roof must come down. Take it up as a, as a Christian. Take it up as a challenge. And move on. We saw what happened. You know, it, it, so many lessons he can learn. People promised him. People did all kinds of things. People told him, chairman of governor's forum, uh, chairman of this forum, all kinds of... The only person that you can absolutely trust is the almighty God. Uh, in my local parlance, they say, Ibeke Leon. Zero. Uh, he is growing. We have seen it. Even your own son, your children, sometimes, you go, when he's grown, you look say, Daddy, I can't do that. You say, ah, Look at this boy. I'm telling you to do so. I say, I, can't. I, I will beat the daylight out of you. I say, beat me now. You, you hear, you see that experience of life. But if you are prayerful, if you have faith in the Almighty, you don't fear nothing. Because what you are going to be in the journey of your life has already been pre-programmed. Let it go. Let it go. Uh, relating with uh, all the other, hey, that's part of politics. 
I tell you one thing. The same American Senate, current Senate, when Biden came, he made a budget, a proposal, how he was going to positively impact on the old people who have no money, on the poor people who cannot even sustain themselves, on health care, on this care, on jobs, and you know, even graduates who have borrowed money to go to school. And he had a big program. You know, it's a 50-50 Senate. Senator Manchin, Joe Manchin, <laughs> he was a thorn in the flesh of his colleagues. Because if he and the other lady, two of them, once they, they don't go with their party, then Biden cannot win. But if it's 50-50, they have a system whereby the vice president can come and cast her vote, and they will win. For one year, they've been on these negotiations. About a week ago, the man just changed his mind. This red senator Manchin, and said that, that, that OK, uh, we, if you can amend this and amend that, uh, he brought a lot of smile. You know, Biden had been regarded as a, as a no good. His, his rating was just crashing, and there was nothing good coming out from him. And he kept struggling and struggling and struggling. They didn't give up. The Senate majority leader did not give up. Just last week, the man changed his mind. He has brought smile now to all the Democrats. That is the activity in politics. You cannot have it all the time in your way. You have some, you lose some. Gather yourself. It's like a soldier. You know the way we are trained. We are in the trenches with your colleagues. You are talking, you are talking. Suddenly, some, some, some rounds started ringing and firing. You look at your friend, he's dead. Beside you, you know what that is going to do for you? He's going to get your adrenaline to the highest level. Because you, you, you are going to fight to achieve that your goal. And that your friend will not die in vain. That is the essence of life. And so, whether he calls all these other people to come and part of politics, you stretch your network, that he will jump ship when he had called them some unprintable names in the past, and they are still the same name till today. APC is a contraption, a confused party, a congregation of strange bedfellows who never meant well for this nation. And we can see it. Whose life is secured now? See the answers. See all these young people. Where are the jobs? But Bola Tinubu continues to take our money from the treasury every 30 days. Every 30 days. But uh, Ambo, they just confirmed that they wanted 50 billion every 30 days and $5 million from the treasury of Lagos. While he was there. Fact, uh, what is his name? The current one is servicing him. See him jumping all over the whole place. Servicing their grandfather. A man who says he wants to be president of Nigeria. President. Public uh, 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 office is a public trust. What is your name? Who are you? Where do you come from? Who owns Alpha Beta Company? You told us that you are 70 years old. Your first child is 61 years old. So at the age of nine, you started procreating. And then you now gave the greatest insult that anybody could have given to this nation. People, unfortunately, secularism had been bastardized. On a Sunday worship in Owo, people went into the church and murdered innocent Christians. The issue of religion had become a major issue in Nigeria now. Which shouldn't be. My older sister, my immediate older sister, married a Muslim. Today she's a larger. My younger brother. He's a, he's a Christian, 
married a Muslim. Today, that girl is a pastor. Secularism. The separation of civic duties and state from religion. Uh, APC, <laughs> my friend, Senator Adamu, he went to church. Praise the Lord. Ha. Ah. Very sensitive things. He should have done the praise the Lord, hallelujah, by telling Bola Tinubu to do mini Muslim, Muslim ticket. By going to that church and saying, yeah, you, are, you, are, you are throwing tantrums and throwing shit on our faces. Can I go to the mosque and say, eh, Allah Akbar? And you think they will feel it, find it funny? Don't joke about these things. These are serious issues. And I don't believe Wiki is playing his game, you know, with his age, he's playing his game and all that, but kadan kada. Wayo wayo. Suru lere. Let him cool it off. Let's get back into the inner chambers of our party and let the elders, the leaders, and the owners of this party remind all of us that we have a, a sacrifice. A, 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 a norm and a culture that, that embedded, that translated to the PDP of this country. Sir, 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 sir,
Where is that giant of Africa? Where? The, 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 look, I saw a clip recently on this, your social media. The visit of the first prime minister to the United States. Uh, prime Minister Tafaba Lewa, when he visited Washington with Kennedy and the Vice President met him, look at the look at the the reception, the respect they gave this country. Where are we today? Look at little Rwanda. They are calling G20. They did not invite Nigeria. What is wrong? And I know. In every human endeavor in this, in this world, you will find one Nigerian as an expert. Look at the young lady from zero, from nowhere, who broke the world record. Just with her, where is the support from Nigeria? Where is the support from Nigeria? And she was there standing, and her anthem was being raised. World record. There are people, you know, if you have gone, I was opportune, you know, joining politics. When I was in the Navy, I knew all our coastline. But joining politics, I've snaked through the roots and corners of this country. There is no part of Nigeria that the Almighty God has not blessed with one resource or the other. Where are the managers? Where are the managers? The starting point is with this new electoral bill, streaming results electronically, no more interface of people physically carrying paper by hand from the polling station to the World Collation Center to the LGA Collation Center. And they kept, if it is 200 here, they would have put nine in front of the two and they manipulate. So the people who will end up managing you are people who are not genuinely elected. So if we started that, we must encourage our people to turn out. Voice populi, voice the uh, Me, for a week, my advice is that historically, they would go you know, he's, he's experienced as he's moving in. He's experiencing all sorts of kind of things. It is not the last bus stop for him. Someday he will wake up and he will look back and he will smile. Ah, ah. you mean human being can do this to another human being? People you have trusted beyond human comprehension. And straight on your face, before your koro koro like this, bam! The only human being, the only, the only personality you trust is the Almighty God. Is that the man who will entrust the resources of this country to manage? Simple question. Why we must win Lagos now? Who owns Alpha Beta Company? Nobody has been able to answer. How much did he pay off those governors, the competitors at their convention, who were dropping like rotten apples that night? The one that was most interesting was my son, <laughs> the speaker. But he got down there. He was, you know, that is when I saw the fair, I remember, <laughs> you know, when you put. Uh, sweets in the front of a baby. He was smiling. <laughs> he saw the lollipop and said, my God. <laughs> Just in two minutes, I accept. <laughs> what? Let him come and deny it. Okay. Walk from here to there. By association, they say, come and debate. We want to, where is TVC? They are not here. That is his station. Let him go alone to TVC for 15 minutes to even address the nation. Unaided. You will see. 
And that is the man who will spend the next four years in the villa. We, you know, the presidential office. Ha! Ministry of Education, Ministry of Internal Resources, Ministry of uh, this, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Work, Ministry of the National Security. This perpetually. You must be reading, you must be writing, you must be screwing, you must be looking and doing the... And there will be domestic problems, then international problems. It's not for the lily liver, these are no rag. You should head home. We need able-bodied person who will be celebra, be able to follow the trends, and it must be so many steps ahead of all those people bringing memos for him to sign. Don't switch off. Right now, I said, who, why have they refused? Look at that visit of Baalewa to President Kennedy in 1963. Brilliant. The reception, okay, take that picture. Compare us to today. Then suddenly we woke up. And it wasn't in our budget. 1.64 Four billion cars bought for Nigeria public. Where is the return on investment? Asu, our students, our children are not back in school. Where is the Minister of Education? Who is the Minister of uh, Finance? What happened? Students the future leaders of this country are not yet back in school. Six goddamn months. Why? Who is in charge? That minister should resign. And the, the minister, uh, who, who was it? I think it was Fajola who was defending the economic something. I said, I looked at I said, look, Fajola, you're a lawyer. You should have been in court talking about economic uh, policy. What is he talking? Look at the debt portfolio we have now. You know, the number one debtor is the federal government, followed very closely by Lagos State Government. And one individual is still taking 10 to 15 percent of our earnings every 30 days. But I will remind him, he will not live here with our money. I can assure him of that. It is historical, it is cultural, it is embedded in our norm here. No, we won't go away with it. All those people who have been parading themselves as partners in crime, they will vomit the money for the interest of all those children who are, who are parading. Come to my local government in Lagos Island, see millions of children. And you know some of them are graduates. No job. No life. No hope. I don't know. Go to Oshodi. And he says, uh, 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 he, he held us hostage. He has his, his neck on our, on, I mean, his, his knee on our neck. Get it off our neck. Let every 18 years old and above go and register. The millions of Oluomo can't do jack this time around. We will be ready because a liberation to freedom in our state. Ah, you know, modern technology is readily available. Modern technology is now readily available. I was privileged 
to have attended the United States Naval War College. I remember we visited the air station in Maine. You know, that small state, the not the northeasternmost state, small state. But that state was monitoring all the submarines in the Atlantic, including all the way back to our side here, the Equatoria Guinea. It's a choke point. But, you know, those nuclear submarines used to hide there to monitor movements all the way to uh, the north and then all the way to the south. They hide there, and so it was a special privilege. Uh, it was a woman commander who took us through the uh, operation. And when America invites you to come to their colleges, especially military, uh, it's because they want you to be their friend. You know, you can't do it all over by yourself. You need friends all over the world. And if you want to be, want them to be your friend, they show you their muzzle, what they are capable of doing. That will convince you that, yes, this is a country to be trusted. And there. I was in the War College 1986. See, way back. 1986. As we sat in the... I was the president of my class. Of class 30. Uh, international naval officers and all that. As we sat down there, the large screen was showing Tinumbu Square, real time. <laughs> I saw all the yellow buses running, people moving and all that. The uh, central bank thing that this is the central bank, you know, with those notes and all that. Then she asked me, because I had to introduce our class as the class president. He said, oh, uh, I'm sure it's the president that uh, this is quite familiar with you. I said, of course. This is Lagos. <laughs> he said, yes. And it's real time. You are seeing people moving, going up. 1986. With that technology. Now, before we graduated, there was uh, Isa Arafat had a crash in the desert. Remember, the Americans located where that crash was and they told the Libyans and all those people looking for it to go to that particular spot that he didn't die, but there was a crash. Satellite technology is readily available. Even drones now are readily available. So what are we doing? My days, the, I, my specialization in the military was weapon systems engineer. You know, we, we had the, the most modern. And an NNS arrived. But what they have now, even if they can't give us the, the premium, we can get those ones that we can still use if we are serious to get these people. You know how many satellites that are roaming all over the space? And you, there's no hiding place. Look at what happened in Afghanistan. And you know, those people controlling those drones are in Nevada desert in the United States. They are not nearby. <laughs> so we are saying, oh, they are in the bush. We, we don't even know where... As if the bush is in some closet that is containerized and invisible. What is our NSA doing? He is a very smart officer. He, 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 is it the system denying them of acquiring such technology? Nigeria is the, the biggest, the largest economy here. So what are we doing to bring peace? Because if we, if anything happens and we decide to start surging to other countries, 
we create hell for them. We will create hell for them. So I am, I am baffled because we have the best of minds. The younger generation now are more schooled. They are brilliant. I don't know whether they still go to all such colleges and, you know, for, for modern training, for exposure to modern technology in warfare. What, why can't we solve this? Nobody can be moving here. They, the Americans, they got this Al-Qaeda man standing in the, in, on, the, on the balcony without collateral, collateral damage. They fired the Misa and took him out. Nobody else died. Give 1.64 billion to buy vehicles for jet. Why can't we do more to our people? Because the number one job of any governance to the people is the security of lives and property. If you cannot guarantee that, what are you doing there? I'm saying this. We are still in the reserve. So, what is going on? About 300 motorcycle boys in AK-47, AK-49, attacked the prison. Kujie prison. If you've been to Abuja, you know the location. Straight, clean, clear road. What happened? The president visited it. What have we done since? You know my fear. If this insecurity of the nation continues, from my perception, Who will be bold enough to go and campaign? And who will be bold enough to go and vote? These are serious issues for us to start considering. Can we guarantee the safety of those who must go and exercise their rights in any part of this country? without being molested, or being harassed, or being captured? Are we thinking about that? It's scary. We don't babao, but these are issues that I believe we will also put in our tactical table to consider them. Uh, APC is in government. We, we, we are the band should go and campaign. Let him go. Let's see them campaign. And the security. And then on the day of election, how would those people go out and vote? 